Hi, my name is Emerson Martin. Talk to you a little bit about O-Line play and let you know what my philosophy is. As you can see, if we start just with my basic philosophy, offensive line philosophy, we want to play physical, so we want to make sure we play physicality and we want to be disciplined. No jumping off sides, eliminating penalties. The second thing we want to do is we want to dominate the line of scrimmage. So we dominate the line of scrimmage through our base blocks, through our pass protection, sometimes short setting, uh, also with double teams at the point of attack, moving the line of scrimmage back to our advantage. Another thing is, we're going to outwork our opponents. So we're always going to work. We're going to put work first. We're going to make sure that we're working at a high intensity, at a high, at a high tempo as we go through our drills, as we go through practice, simulating a game situation, making sure that we're at our peak and at our highest performance. All right, studying film. Studying film is a big part of it. Studying film, understanding what your team is trying to do to you, what, how people are trying to attack you. You know, they say you do better if you know better. So as we study our opponents, understanding what they're trying to do so that we can move faster. A player who knows what he's doing that moves at a faster pace is a better football player. A player that thinks and doesn't understand what he's trying to do is always going to hesitate. So all these things are incorporated because after we get through film study, we want to play with speed and tempo and a sense of urgency. All right, so we're going to talk about a couple of drills that I like. My three favorite drills would be and when we look at pass pro. So this drill is a pass pro drill. It's set up, I need three people at the point of attack when we start the drill. They're going to be about three yards apart. And what's going to happen is this guy's going to be here in a, in a left-hand stance. So he's in a left-hand stance. We got a guy over him and a guy three yards away from him. He's going to start his kick. The minute he starts his kick, this guy will move. This guy will stay at the time being. So once he starts his kick and he makes contact with this bag at that point, once he makes contact with that bag and he punches the bag, the bag holder will stop. He will then transition into a post. This guy will come. So he's going to do that three times and we do it both ways. The second drill we get to is our base block drill. So our base block drill is just a bag drill, whether we're going right or left. A simple short dig. If we were in a right-hand stance here, short dig, bringing that second foot, getting it in the ground, and then accelerating our feet, running, running, running. No more of the chop, 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 chop that we used to do, but accelerating. I can run forward faster than the guy can run backwards. That, those are how you get your dominating blocks. When we dominate the down, you start getting pancakes and we, get, and we cause movement. Here's a reach block. As a reach block, say we got an offset, we got a five or a three offset to our outside and right-hand stance. I want to take that outside dig to get leverage on the outside. I want to put my head in his shoulder. So I'm going to put my head in his far shoulder, the second foot coming across with speed, driving that guy to get him on an angle and then hooking him late. So those are the things that this is necessary for one-on-one -on -one blocks. And then we'll transition into our double teams with our zone. This is on the back side of the zone, the scoop block. This is on the front side of a trap. So on the back side of the zone as we're working to this backer, this tackle would come down, leaving this end loose for the read. We would come down, we would get movement here, and as that backer either flows across, that guard would come out, or that backer hesitate, that tackle would come across, as that the tackle will come off to the backer as this tackle accelerates and comes across. So we pick those two things up. This is more of a trap, which is a gap down backer scheme. And a lot of people use it, rush the counter trade or just basic traps basic kick out blocks. We'll have a double team between the guard and the tackle, and we'll go to the back side backer, not the play side. On the double team, it's usually a play side backer. On the, on the gap down backer, it's the backer removed to the back side. So both of these are back, Both this is a front side, this is a back side scoop. We would do the same thing if we, this was the front side, and there was a tackle who had a five, and this guy here had a one. With the center here, the center would work to the one, we will work towards the five, moving up. So a lot of things are dependent upon the offensive line and the defensive line. Now, so one of the things is I attached a video. We talked about we talked about zone blocking against a 4-2. Zone blocking to a four, against a 4-2 is when we have B-gap protectors on both sides. So what happens is on three-man slide side, in order to 200, it's a 200 jet, we always slide away from the number. So we go 200 jet away from the number, we're going to slide to the left. If we're sliding to the left, we got a big on. We got two bigs and a back on the back side. The tackle understands from his set 
that he can't get beat over the top. He's always got big gap help. So there'll be that guard in the presence of the guard on the inside. The guard understands that when he slides, he's helping solidifying the one so the center can get there. As he looks to the wheel, he's looking out to the tackle to help. On the front side, we got two man blocks. So you got a three and a five on the front side. So we have a three and a five on the front side. We're going to be man on the front side base. We'll block that one base with the guard. We'll be man on with the tackle. Tackle understands he can't get beat over the top. Guard understands he can't get beat inside. A lot of times you sort of back in that B gap. That back is reading Mike to Will or Mike to Sam. With him reading Mike to Sam, he will chip. If no one comes, he can get out to the pass coverage and the protection. So these are the fundamentals of what we want to look at as we look at those things and as we go through the different processes. There's a couple of different things that we have attached. I want to attach a, a pass pro set, understanding how what a kick slide is, how to incorporate a kick slide, what it means, how to get balance on your kick slide so that we can set, be firm on our set, making sure that we get a, a maximum protection pocket for the quarterback and that he's secure. So we're going to do those things. Those are the things I want to look at. I just wanted to talk about my philosophy, what we're trying to do. We'll get more into film. We'll get more into breaking it down as we get together and we, we do a Zoom presentation together. So these are the things I wanted to incorporate along with the things that I've already sent. So if you take this, have anything else, let me know. Thanks, Kit, for your time.